Jay Widener is with us this evening on the uh, day after of the signing of the health reform bill by the teleprompter in chief. This is a, a big story. I've just uh, sent for posting an analysis by a constitutional attorney who describes the health care bill as a transfer of power that kills the Constitution. Jay, uh, this didn't surprise you, of course. This is a, what it is, is essentially, is a modern, updated, uh, Zionist, extremist, Jew, Bolshevik takeover of the United States, what's left of the formerly United States anyway. This is a, this is a plan that's drawn from Vice President Biden, a rather uh, colorful description. This is a big effing deal. And he wasn't saying, yeah, big deal. He was talking about this is a, this is a big plank in the Sovietization, the communization of America. How do you see it? I couldn't have said it better, and I'm glad he used the F word because that's what's about to happen to us. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think that's an accident, and no, nor do I think uh, um, Obama saying that we're going to, when we find out that, uh, that they're not going to pull the plug on Granny. You know, that just means that they are going to pull the plug on Granny. Sure. And uh, um, maybe they even pulled the plug on his Granny. Who knows? Uh, well, we, I, by the way, I think that that's a foregone uh, conclusion. Uh, he, <laughs> the woman knew too much. He, he well, went over she, to say goodbye to her, and they put her to sleep, just like you do a pet. You know, that's an uh, interesting thing about all this. It's just a side, because I do want to get to the health care. You know, Obama... Um, was raised by his mom. He was raised by him, by his grandparents. Mm -hmm. And this is a little unknown fact, but Barack Obama never attended any of their funerals. Which, I mean, maybe some people say he's a busy guy and everything, but I don't know. I think that says a lot about him. Actually. I think so, too. I wonder if he attended the funeral of his real father, Frank Marshall Davis. <laughs> I bet he didn't, actually. Um, did, but that did would you be interesting the, to find out. Did you look at the two pictures of those men? Oh, no, there's no doubt. He's not Barack Obama Sr.'s son. No chance. I mean, he has Frank Marshall Davis's basic yeah. facial yeah, structure. A, he, Frank was a handsome guy, and a, Barack got his looks. That's right. So, I mean, it's him. So yeah. I think it is him. I think he raised him. And, uh, boy, the uh, culmination of uh, this is a Frank Marshall's wet dream, what just happened, because there's literally a transfer of wealth that's going to occur and it's going to be along racial lines, where, yeah. whether this is intended or not. And um, uh, I don't know where this is going to end. Uh, the ma mainstream media, I don't know if you've been following, it's a little hard for me because I don't really have a TV, but I follow it on the computer, and uh, they're just going crazy about uh, people throwing bricks through uh, Democrat windows and cutting power lines. And, right. And you just know that it's probably uh, agent provocateurs that are doing this. Right. Just like the YouTubes of the people protesting and then the Black Caucus walk through, there are oh, yeah. at least 20 YouTubes from 20 different angles and uh -huh. with the sound going, and you don't hear any N-word. And, and so this is just all being crafted very yeah. cleverly to, to get us to this place where the economy is going to be taken over uh, Soviet Union style, exactly like you said, and it's this is the breaking point of the United States, and I don't know if there's any place to go. So there really isn't. No, uh, no. no because you go to a third world country, there's no law and order there except by money and international intelligence agencies, Absolutely. Assad, CIA, go in there and kill anybody they want. Nothing's going to be done about it. You're just dead. Uh, you stay here, you've got a pretense of some kind of security. Uh, at least they can't be too blatant about it. They're very stealthy, of, co of course, about killing people, and they do it all the time. Frank Marshall Davis was, by the way, as you know, very deeply entrenched in Chicago. Uh, the, he had influence there. He had connections. And so uh, little Barky went uh, ultimately to Chicago and probably never did a, a full semester's duty in any course he took if he even ever showed up. I mean, uh, they just put this never guy showed up. Uh, yeah. And, of course, it would be the Marxist professors at Columbia, which let this go by. And, uh, and, and people think, you know, that we're exaggerating. I've got a lot of hate mail since I put up that uh, article on, on your site, and more than I've ever received. And uh, um, 
people are, are very upset. They think that I have betrayed something because I've dared to criticize the Messiah. But, huh. uh, you know, it, yeah. it, 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 I, 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 what am I supposed to do? Not say anything? Right. Let it go? Let it slide like everybody else is doing? Mm-hmm. Not show any courage at all to identify this for what it is, which is a fascist takeover of the United States? by uh, an imperial, uh, a person with imperial ambitions. And I don't know where this is going to go, but I think they're fomenting a race war right now. And, they uh, and, you, and you know how quickly they can do it. You know, yeah. you know how quickly they can do it. One bullet, uh, and they've got a massive yeah. race war in this country. Yeah, I mean, you know, everybody listening, listen, don't fall for it. So let's, if someone's going to do something stupid, let's make sure that it's an agent provocateur and then we yeah. can investigate and find out who this person is. Well, they, look at the Twitter uh, traffic this morning. There were apparently a number of messages calling for a bullet for Obama's brain. Now, yep. agent provocateurs, easy. This is yep. all, the, we have to keep in mind that these people are far, far more shrewd than we can imagine they are. As, a, as an aware part, a small part of the populace. They plan these things out to the T. Look at 9-11, the 747 full of Israelis that took off, uh, I don't know how many hours afterward when the operation was complete. Goodbye, and read the story. Um, it's all there on rents.com. I mean, they, it's quite obvious. This has been orchestrated by our controllers. Look what Netanyahu did. He came over here, and all of a sudden, the fake controversy and standoff yeah. between the Obama administration and Hillary Clinton, who wrote her, what is it, master's thesis on Saul Alinsky, uh, and really? called him a great man. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, all of a sudden, the, the 1,600 homes issue became a non-issue, just like that. The, yeah, but, the, but Obama punished him because he didn't get his picture taken. With oh, well, that's, yeah, he may not get over that for a while. Leave scars. Yeah, uh, they said basically, no, no, they, yeah, we're they, going, they, they know exactly what they're doing. They're way, yeah. way ahead of us. It's political theater. And they, they said, we're going to have to agree to disagree, I guess. That's the way it's going to be resolved. 50,000 more homes now in Jerusalem. Uh, Netanyahu says, Jerusalem is not being settled. Those settlements aren't settlements. In other words, they already own it. How do you settle something you already own? Yeah. So it's it's bad. It's really bad, and what, we're now facing it here. And the final, uh, you know, the final stages are in, and it's a it's a depopulation. It's time to get rid of this guy. Um, that's just the way it is. And if they have to foment a race war or do it through the health system, but if you, once this once you know the four years passes and they've taxed the hell out of us, and then finally we get our supposed benefits. Uh, it's, it's obvious what's going to happen. The the uh, rule that makes uh, insurance companies take people who have pre-existing conditions where it's something I actually in some way support and think that there's something we can do about all of that, but that's just going to break the backs of these companies, which is what they want. And then that's going to force people to start complaining. They're going to be complaining about the $1,400 insurance penalty that they're going to give if they don't have insurance. What is the and baseline uh, best projection, uh, excuse me, Jay, of the yeah. annual cost per person for insurance? What is it supposed to cost at this point? Do you know the number? Uh, no, it's around, uh, as I recall, it's around $3,000 for, for a family of four right now, 3000 to 4000 bucks a year, which is a lot of money. I mean, not 3000 I'm talking about a month, excuse me. Which is a lot of money, but wait a minute, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Three thousand? No, 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 no. That's thirty no, thousand yeah. a year. No, 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 no. It costs for a family of four right now. Uh, it's about twenty-two hundred a month that uh, you're either your your employer is paying or you're paying. And that's, that's what's going to be put bucks a person a month. So it's not going to come out of the employers. It's no, going to come that'll out of end first. You see. The employers are going to implore the government to take over theirs because why should they pay for it? As you can see, it's a, it's a house of cards. They're, they're, sending, they're setting us up so that we're all going to complain and protest that we can't afford it, and then the government's going to come in, and, and it'll be universal and just what they always wanted. And then, and then, my friend, you and I and people like us are in serious trouble because if you think that the political... That they're not going to, there's not going to be a political payback to critics of the government. Hmm. 
Woof, and then no one is talking about using health care as a political weapon. But believe me, the Soviets practiced it, the Chinese practiced it. Right, right. Okay, uh, talking with Jay Widener. When we come back, I'll spend a little bit of time about this article written by retired constitutional attorney Michael Conley called The Truth About Health Care and its staggering implications. He said to begin his article, Well, I have done it. I have read the entire text of the proposed House Bill 3200, the Affordable Health Care Choices Act of 2009. I studied it with particular emphasis from my area of expertise, constitutional law. We'll find out what he had to say next with Jay Widener. Okay, let's get right back to our conversation with Jay Widener, who is on with us once a month, sometimes more often. He wanted to come on tonight, and I wanted him to come on tonight to talk about this, what it really means. Michael Conley, a retired constitutional attorney, has written an article about this. The uh, issues are really about transferring power. He said, I studied it. He read the whole bill, remember. I studied it with particular emphasis, yeah, from my area of expertise, constitutional law. I was frankly concerned that parts of the proposed law that were being discussed might be unconstitutional. What I found was far worse than what I had heard or expected. To begin with, much of what has been said about the law and its implications is in fact true. Despite what the Democrats and the media are saying, the law does provide for rationing of health care, particularly where senior citizens and other classes of citizens are involved. Free health care for illegal immigrants as well, and free abortion services. Not to mention, probably forced participation in abortions by members of the medical profession. For, let me read that again. To begin with, much of what has been said about the law and its implications is in fact true. Despite what the Democrats and the media are saying, the law does provide for rationing of health care, particularly where senior citizens and other classes of citizens are involved. Free health care for illegal immigrants, free abortion services, and probably forced participation in abortions by members of the medical profession. The bill will also eventually force private insurance companies out of business and put everyone into a government-run system. All decisions about personal health care will ultimately be made by federal bureaucrats, and most of them will not be health care professionals. Hospital admissions, payments to physicians, and allocations of necessary medical devices will be strictly controlled by the government. However, as scary as all of that is, it just scratches the surface. Uh, that's pretty scary already, Jay. Yeah, to have a a uh, constitutional attorney saying what I've been thinking is disconcerting to say the least. Yeah. I mean, so this is what this is, and this is yeah. part of the calling. I mean, yeah, this is, to get it. this is a change. This is Obama. This is what this change is, looks like. That's right. Now, and, 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 and you know what? People who are young and listen to this, you may think that we're kind of crazy and wacky, but I'm going to say something to you. You, uh, you know, you remember what we say, and in 10 years, Go visit your local graveyard 15 years from now, say, uh, and, and, and look at the number of deaths before this health care bill gets enacted and after. And I'll guarantee you that the amount of people dying increases. They'll never talk about it in the media. The only way you'll be able to find out is to go look. Well, uh, it will be huge. And, 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 and they are targeting the people that are going to be turning into their 60s in another four years. That's right. And is that just a coincidence that the baby boom generation is going into their 60s at that same time? Yeah. The generation they owe $80 trillion to, they swiped yeah. in Social Security from them. <laughs> this is the mob, and they took our money, and they're not paying us back. And they're going to do to us what every mobster does to someone who asks for their money back. You bet. <laughs> They're going All to right. whack us. Yeah, and the idea of what this is is a war on the baby boom generation because it's it the last generation that has its wits about it, its wisdom, and its perspective with which to do battle with these people. So I they're completely going to take them agree out. with that. 
they 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 had a decision to let us die out or to kill us, and I'm afraid they've made a decision to get rid of us soon. They're, gonna, they're, gonna they're really tired of us. And, That's right. And we read, and we know what's going on, and they know that we know, and we know who they are, and they have just decided to get rid of us. And the poor yeah. generation below us hasn't got a clue. Two generations below it. Oh, Every 20 years of generation. They've got two generations now. The MTV generation was the first, and then those morons, of course, have teenage children. Yep. Uh, and Who are all, over. like, psychotic right now. Psych psychotic on medications. Yep. No intellect at all. Totally reactive blobs. Uh, there are some exceptions, but not many. The bill also says Attorney Michael Conley will eventually force private insurance companies out of business and put everyone into a government-run system. All decisions about personal health care, I'm reading this again, will ultimately be made by federal bureaucrats, and most will not be health care professionals. However, as scary as all of that is, it just scratches the surface. In fact, I have concluded that this legislation really has no intention of providing affordable health care choices. Here, here. Instead, it is a convenient cover for the most massive transfer of power to the executive branch of government that has ever occurred, and he underlined that, or even been contemplated. If this law or a similar one is adopted, major portions of the Constitution of the United States will effectively have been destroyed, underlined. The first thing to go will be the masterfully crafted balance of power between the executive, legislative, and judicial branches of the U.S. government. The Congress will be transferring to the Obama administration authority in a number of different areas over the lives of the American people and the businesses they own. Sound like the New World Order? You mm -hmm. bet. Comment? Well, uh, yeah, that's, that, that guy has read the bill. That's exactly the plan. And it's an insidious, creeping thing that they've masterfully put together so that we will not see it happening until it's here. That's right. Outside of paying the taxes, we'll see that happen. No, they'll keep everybody drugged up and uh, mass media mind numb. There's nothing there anyway. Uh, geez. We do have one hope, and that is Ron Paul's uh, comments about bankruptcy killing it first. Right. Well, he could be right, but I think they'll have a way to deal with that, too. Be right I back with Jay Widener in just a minute. Let's jump right back into this. Uh, I'm going through a rather short but succinct and powerful letter by Michael Conley, retired constitutional attorney. Now, where was I? Hold on a second. All right. The first thing to go will be the masterfully crafted balance of power that our founding fathers carefully put together between the executive, legislative, and judicial branches. The Congress will be transferring to the Obama administration authority in a number of different areas over the lives of the American people and the businesses they own. The irony is that Congress doesn't have any authority to legislate in most of those areas to begin with. I defy anyone to read the Constitution and find any authority granted to the members of Congress to regulate health care. It's not there. This legislation also provides for access by the appointees of the Obama administration of all of your personal health care, which is a direct violation of the specific provisions of the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution. Information, your personal financial information as well will be accessible, and the information of your employer, physician, and hospital. All of this is a protection against unreasonable searches and seizures as provided by the Constitution. But you can forget about all those and the right to privacy. So your personal financial information, the information about your employer, your physician, your hospital, all of it, no more protection. No more privacy. Gone. That will have been legislated into oblivion, regardless of what the Third and Fourth Amendments may provide. If you decide not to have health care insurance, or if you have private insurance that is not, quote, deemed acceptable to the Health Choices Administrator, appointed by Obama, another czar, there will be a tax imposed upon you. It is called a tax instead of a fine because of the intent to avoid application of the Due Process Clause of the Fifth Amendment. However, that doesn't work 
since there is nothing in the law that allows you to contest or appeal the imposition of that tax. It is definitely depriving someone of property without due process of law. They, 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 you know, we talked in the past day about who writes these bills and laws. It's certainly not the moron representatives that the uh, unwitting public sends to Washington. These are professionally written by Bolshevik Marxist Zionists and watered down and handed to people to sponsor. There's no doubt, and, and they even, they've even the people that wrote the bill have exempted themselves from the health care. <laughs> yes. That came out yesterday. Yeah. And these, these are people that aren't elected. We really don't even know their name. And they seem to have, like, they must have a building, like, you know, 300 stories filled with people cranking out bills that no one reads but them. Yeah, and I agree. I, I, don't mean, I, I don't even believe it. I mean, does anybody really expect us to believe a 2,700-page bill can be read in the time that was given and be understood? Is there anyone that can read a 2,700-page bill? Well, remember, page? The, pa the Patriot Act was written by a, a Vietnamese-American, and the final version was actually substituted... The original version, which had been looked at at least by some people, was removed, and a substitute version was inserted into the approval process in the Congress at 4 a.m. on the day of approval. Yes. All right. Yes. So, well, this is this. Uh, it, it it is incredible to be watching this, and um, uh, you know, and I'm sure that you know they would like nothing more than for you and I to talk, get everybody up in arms and have a revolution, but neither one of us are that stupid. No. So, you know, what, what do we do? And well, we don't, we don't return the horrors and traitors to Congress in the coming election. That's, that's sad, but, as you well know, Jay, it's all controlled. D, D bold, die bold has been purchased by ESNS which now controls 90% of the electronic vote counting, ballot counting in this country. One company, ESNS, has eaten up Diebold, Diebold, and they own it. So, yeah, you see a 51-49 or a 50.5, 49.5 election, it'll go to the incumbent every time. They, they, uh, they look, will, yes. Nothing is left to chance. Uh, okay, so the attorney goes on to say, so there are three of those pesky amendments that the far left hates so much out of the original ten in the Bill of Rights that are effectively being nullified by this law. But it doesn't stop there, though. The Ninth Amendment provides the enumeration of the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. The Tenth Amendment states the power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution. The power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are preserved to the states respectively, or to the people. Under the provisions of this piece of congressional handiwork, the health bill, neither the people nor the states are going to have any rights or powers at all in many areas that once were theirs to control. So those hoping for a states' rights rebellion, the hope is slim. He says, I could write many more pages about this legislation, but I think you get the idea. This is not about health care. It is about seizing power and limiting your rights. Article 6 of the Constitution requires the members of both houses of the Congress to be, quote, bound by oath or affirmation to support the Constitution, end quote. If I was a member of Congress, I would not be able to vote for this legislation or anything like it without feeling I was violating that sacred oath or affirm affirmation. If I voted for it anyway, I would hope the American people would hold me accountable. For those who might doubt the nature of this threat that I have written about, I suggest they consult the source, the U.S. Constitution and Bill of Rights. There you can see exactly what we are about to have taken from us. Signed, Michael Conley, retired attorney, constitutional law instructor, Carrollton, Texas. So there it is. It's up at rents.com, or will be, in the top center section, the featured story box about the health bill. This is, uh, they, they are just despicable, these people. They are beyond evil. They are psychopathic, pathological, sociopaths 
who don't regard human life like we do at all. Uh, and they bleed us and bleed us and bleed us and continue to give to Israel all that Israel requests. Israel, of course, being run out of the city of London by the Rothschilds. The only family, private family in the world to own its own, quote, country and its own thermonuclear weapons. I mean, it's quite something when you think about it. That is. And, and, and yeah, that's, uh, and it's, now it's time to get rid of it. And, and, uh, that's what's going to happen. This is the thing we all have to gird up for. Oh, true. Talking with Jay Widener, and we'll, uh, hear from Jay and more. It's pretty frustrating in just a couple minutes. Okay, back with Jay Widener. All right, Jay. What do we tell people to do here? I honestly don't know. I think the uh, electoral process is, unless you get out there and you vote 90% against somebody, they'll they'll fix it. I don't know. No, uh, I think the, the deals voting. that were cut in the last couple of days were obscene by these on the holdout votes to get them to come around. Yeah. Uh, blackmail, bribery, extortion, all kinds of things are going on. Believe it. Yeah, the uh, best advice we can give is uh, you know uh, get healthy and stay healthy because uh, uh, stay out of their clutches as long as you possibly can and uh, exercise and meditate and do yoga and eat organic and whatever it takes to keep yourself from getting into their clutches because once you're in their clutches, I'm afraid uh, it's not going to be good for us. And I'm trying to be nice about this, but. Uh, you know, there, there's, these are not the, solu- the, the solutions that they're going to present are going to be a centralized base solution and therefore not exotic solutions, just a series of base solutions, and they're all going to be pharmaceutically based. Right. So um, there, there's, there's no way around. You'll begin to take... Uh, contradicting drugs which have contradicting side effects and will cause uh, repercussions going in all directions and and the people as that article uh, stated are not uh, medical professionals so they're just going to be deciding things in an arbitrary way and uh, people that are 55 or over are going to be in some very bad shape because they're going to be entering into the into old age just as all this takes effect and uh and if you look at the tea party people you can see they're basically those people and they know uh the tea party people for whatever their faults uh, are actually the only ones who appear to have read the bill everybody else appears to have not read the bill including obama who can't seem to decide what's in the bill either so <laughs> Uh, yeah, it is very, very scary. And everyone I know who's read the bill is against it. And everyone I know who's for the bill has not read it. And, and everyone I know who was against the bailout was, I mean, uh, absolutely against it. it was, there was no equivocation, and that was the majority of people I talked to. I didn't know anybody who supported the bailout. No, I don't either. Or the uh, Patriot Act. I, you can go on well, and on. Yeah. Representative okay. Dingle says Obamacare will eventually control the people. He's right. Yeah, boy, he let it slip there. And uh, that is exactly the point. This is not about health care. This is about a power uh, grab. See how and they snuck it in, folks? And you wait, watch. Uh, the Zionist, the extremist Jews, the APAC, and the other organizations, the SPLC and, and JDL, ADL, B'nabrith, are going to pass so-called hate laws. Now, you watch. They're training legions of prosecutors to go around the country, and anyone who criticizes Israel, the slaughter of the Palestinian people, the control of this country by a foreign agency, which is APAC, uh, will be branded uh, anti-Semitic or anti-Jewish or what, whatever. Uh, this, we've, we've lost it. We've lost it, folks. We've lost it. There is just, nowhere to go either because yeah. we really are the last stand. Uh, for whatever reasons, America was able to hold this off. And I think we're actually going to get seriously punished for the rebellion against this globalization that was happening, you know, from the 50s on. Uh, America got targeted. Uh, it, it had articulate voices against, uh, against this. Uh, you, you may remember, uh, 
Representative Larry McDonald from Georgia. Of course. Uh, he was a great, articulate yeah. spokesperson yep. for the Democrat. Yeah, a wonderful Democrat. future ahead of him, yeah. yeah. Yeah, a Democrat. Yeah. And he was blown out of the skies over Sockland Island, you know. They don't um, care. They took a whole 747 down. They yeah, don't care about killing guy. people. That, and it's happened before. Oh, they, yeah. Somebody wrote a story today. Jay, it was very interesting. He said, it's really not the Obama administration per se that is going to do America in, but it is the majority of its population, its people, who are now mm -hmm. so stupid and so unenlightened and disinterested, most of them, in what goes on around them. That's the big enemy of America. And there's a point there. It's, it's, they've, well, they've done it, though. They've engineered two generations of, of morons. And it's yeah, very simple and destroyed for them the to mail. Move so that they're, well, they, if a male rises up and, and points out the obvious, he's just called angry. Yeah. Um, they, they mistake masculinity a self -hating for male. anger. <laughs> yeah, then you have to be a self-hating male and have a whole generation of, of pansies and wimps coming up below us that couldn't fight their way out of a wet paper bag. And, and I don't know, man. I, I'm looking at it, and I'm just saying maybe I should just, you know, Get healthy, get as healthy as I can, and stay out of the system as long as possible. That's but even that's going to become more and more difficult as time goes on, and people are going to be labeled political problems and political, and they're not going to receive the health care, and and you're going to see that. You're going to see the dissidents are going to be the ones that don't get the health care. That's where this is going until everyone is firmly in line and no one complains. And that is what is about to happen. I think and over the short term, uh, dissent, what there is of it, and it's very minimal, it's on the Internet, will be allowed to uh, to rattle around because it gives the, the impression to people that makes the pretense that there's still open debate and freedom of speech. Yeah. They're not so stupid as to take that down immediately. It'll happen in time, but it'll be done uh, yeah. piecemeal. Uh, it's like David Icke's uh, expression, steam whistles. So, you know, you blow off steam by looking mm -hmm. like you're, you're alerting everyone. Very like good. Bill Maher is a steam whistle, and John Stewart is a steam whistle. Yeah. They look like dissidents, but they're not. Oh, please, and not a chance. Not a chance. And everyone thinks that they're so courageous, and they're not taking any courageous stands at all. So <laughs> it's really quite amazing. And, uh, you know, I saw today that Paul, uh, was it Paul William Roberts? He's retiring now. He's given up. Um, Paul Craig Roberts, I mean, he's giving up. Oh, he is? Yeah. He's, oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, I just came out today. He's quitting. He's got done with it. For oh, really? Season. Did he write Did a you, final column? Yeah, yeah. I'll look for it and send it to you. It's uh, quite a depressing Well, that's sad because That's just about what you've been saying. Actually, it sounds like you. Exactly, almost. Mm -hmm. like, sentence for sentence, almost. Exactly why he's quitting, why he's given up, who did it, who did 911, mm -hmm. who he are did. we the poodle for the whole thing. Oh, my. Send it. <laughs> yep. uh, and, I'll uh, put it up at the top. This, uh, Paul uh, was a, a, a great contributor to awareness and intelligence and enlightenment over the years he's been writing, and that this, is a, this is a very substantial setback. Uh, it is. There's no one to replace him. No, and he's you know never got picked up by the mainstream media. But you know there is one light in this all darkness, and that is you know the New York Times is going out of business, the LA Times is going out of business, <laughs> Chicago Tribune, yeah. the MSNBC has about 32 people that watch it, uh, CNN if they can muster 25,000 people, and I'm not kidding, uh, they're doing good. And uh, Rents.com is uh, doing uh, really fabulous. So yeah. the alternative media is, 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 is really growing right now, the new media, and the old media is dying away. And that has to be at least one thorn, you know, in the side of the, of the beast here. And uh, I think no, we all have to re really appreciate, you know, what this, the new media and sites like yours have actually staved off the monster for a little while. We're still free somewhat because of it, mm -hmm. but now what I think they're doing with this whole thing, attacking these people that are saying that they're being, uh, that the Democrats are being attacked, is they're, they're going to bring about a, a, some kind of racial situation, which is then going to collapse into uh, some kind of control over the new media. Mm -hmm. I haven't figured out how they're going to do it yet. but They already have a plan. 
We just haven't been able to figure it out. In that building where all the other plans are drawn. Of course. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We could find that building. We'd be better off. Funny to watch uh, the Chinese tell Google to take a hike and their sensor. We call them sensors. What they're trying to do is to keep out Zionist porn, immorality, degradation, and propaganda. They're trying to keep their own house in order. They don't want this stuff injected into their body politic, into the society, and the consciousness of their people. Um, They're not perfect, neither are we. But they have a right to keep the Internet the way they want it. Well, they do. And, you know, it's the the old story of... uh uh, why don't the you know the Muslims want to uh, join our society? So, and the answer, you know, the sarcastic answer is, oh, I guess they just, you know, they just don't, you know, they can't wait to consume our pornography and, and, and behavior modification drugs and our, you know, the, our culture is not something that should be exported because <laughs> it's not a culture. It's a it's a type of madness. It's a type of psychosis. 